Welcome to another version of Doe's Fun with TAC Phones. In this episode, we're going to remote a radio using an ANGRA 6 system. So sit back and enjoy remoting a radio. This is the ANGRA 6 remoting system. Basically, it uh, was designed to allow them to remote a radio from one location to another using 2 wire field wire. Uh, basically, it was an older unit. It uses the old style handsets right here that use the uh, U71 connectors or U77 connectors versus the the smaller ones. It used an H33 or an H60 handset. It basically operates on two D cell batteries just like a TA312 phone does. That's why I initially purchased them was to try using them as a phone. Each one of the units has a a crank ringer on it so you can actually ring the other end and talk back and forth as a phone. It also has the ability also to operate a radio that's remoted. This unit right here is the actual remote end which would be set up where your command post where you want to use the radio from. It has a selector right here which is used to select radio you want to talk or telephone if you want to use it in telephone mode has two binding posts here with a field wire connect. This right here is where the handset connector will connect. It also has this right here which is a call light. You can actually go on the inside of this and configure it so either it will make it ring like a phone or the light will come on when we have an incoming call. And of course this is your hand generator to send a phone call if you wanted to. This unit itself is powered by two D-cell batteries which are used just like in a TA312 to power the microphone. It also has a BA1414 battery, which is a 45 volt battery. They don't make them anymore, of course. I basically ended up having to put together five 9 volt batteries to get the correct voltage to allow this to operate. And what that voltage does is this actually worked with the remote end via what's called DC key. It uses a DC current to trigger a relay on the other end that would in turn PTT the radio. And that's the, uh, the, low, the remote end. This is the local end. It's a little bit bigger. It has very similar same controls on it. The ringer right here, the binding post right here, connect your field wire, handset, call light. It has two selector switches. This one is here selects the op mode of operation of the radio. You can either operate this in telephone where you're talking to the other end or perhaps a TA312. You can operate it in a continuous wave, which is what they used to do when they used to use the old Morse code teletype keys or you can operate in an AM mode which is basically I'm going to talk on the radio. This actually selects whether the remote is going to control the radio or it's going to be operated as a telephone or the local control unit plugged in here can talk to the radio. In the very back of this there's a compartment open up and this is the actual connector that connected to the radio. Now one of the problems you had with one of these systems was once you connected it up to the radio you could no longer monitor what was going on in the radio. So to solve this problem, they came up with this device right here. This is basically a splitter. So this would connect to the handset connector on either the remote or local end. And it gave you the ability to connect the speaker so you could listen to the traffic on the radio. Or it allowed you to connect the handset, which allowed you to then talk on the radio. This system is basically designed to work with older style radios. Um, they do have a newer version of this, but what I mean by newer, it's probably not quite as old as one, but it gives you the ability to access two radios. And instead of this selector switch right here having a telephone or AM or CW selector switch, it allowed you to select either telephone, set one, or set two, allowing you to choose the radio you wanted. I originally picked these up because like I said I wanted to try using them as a field phone which they worked for. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to connect the radio up to this and do some remote testing. So this is a ANGRC6 remote control set. This is basically the setup we're going to use. We're going to use uh, the Gray 6 system. We're going to have the C433 as the remote connected via field wire to the C434 local unit. In turn, we're going to connect the local unit to a CB radio 
using an interface cable. The interface cable will allow us to uh, interface the audio coming from the local unit, the mic audio to the radio. It allows us to send the PTT signal to the radio, and it allows us to take the speaker audio from the radio and route it back through the uh, local unit, through the field wire, and to the remote unit. And in this case, we're actually going to be using a, uh, for our radios, we're going to be using a unit in 510, basically mobile CB radio. Uh, and I'm going to take flack over this. This is what I had, so this is what I used. I basically fabricated a uh, interface cable that plugs into the microphone and plugs into the external speaker. That, in turn, will then connect to the, uh, the remoting cable on the end of the local 434 unit and... There we go, we're now to the two-wire field wire. For the actual the actual radio to represent the distant end or uh, the radio network, I'm using a hand hand unit and radio. So this is basically how it works. Let's do some testing and see how it goes. Okay, here's our local setup. We have our C433, the remote end. We have a speaker and headset connected to it using the splitter. We have our field wire. Then across we have our local end consisting of our C434 connected to our trusty unit in 510CB and we'll go ahead and uh, I'll scan back. And we'll go ahead and we'll do some checks. When I'm currently set up, I have that handheld uh, radio there that will be uh, represent the radio network we want to talk to through our uh, Gray 6 system. And we'll go ahead and we'll make some calls back and forth and we'll see how it works. Okay, the first call I'll make, I'll go ahead and I'll call the, uh, to the radio using the gray six. Test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Test out. Okay, that worked well. We had a little bit of a hum in the background. Like I said, I may have a few impedance items that aren't correct. And I'll go and do the next step. We're going to talk from the radio over the air into the CB, then through the gray six and back to the speaker right there. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, test out. Okay, we'll go ahead and do it one more time. Test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, test out. And we'll talk again through the speaker. Test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, test out. This is a little bit more in detail on how I did built the interface cable. Um, I basically used a U161 connector, which actually mates onto the, the remote cable that comes out of the uh, 434. And on that connector, I uh, soldered uh, a 3.5 millimeter plug. You can see a little plug on here. That's what actually plugs into the radio speakers, the external plug on the CB. That brings the audio coming out of the radio and places it into the... Uh, 434 so it can be pushed on the field wire to the other end. In addition to that, you have to have some connectivity for ground wires, uh, mic audio, and transmit control. On the mic audio, I had to use another 56k ohm resistor because I was overdriving the system. The ground shield basically functions as a shield for the, uh, the mic audio and as an actual ground. The transmit controls the actual PTT signal. Basically what happens is when the remote end keys their handset, the DC voltage goes over the, the two wires to the 434 and the remote end, which in turn triggers a relay, which then grounds pin F and pin E, which tells the radio to go ahead and PTT. And while this is going on, the audio is flowing through the system into it, so the speaker from the uh, the 434 into the the CB mic input and goes out on the radio 
as a, uh, a signal. Basically, when you unkey, the thing goes back to normal and the audio returns. That's basically how it works. I chose to use a unit in 510 in my project because that's the radio I had on hand. Um, I imagine with some checking, you could probably figure out how to use it on any radio that had a actual handheld PTT on it. My intention is to actually build a small interface box that allows me to hook everything up and get rid of all the uh, the wire nuts and tape and everything that I'm currently using to make it work. But this was basically proven to make it work, and it shows that it works, and we'll go from there. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please send them to the email 